Slippery fish, slippery fish, swimming through the water. Slippery fish, slippery fish, gulp, gulp, gulp. Oh no, she's been eaten by an octopus, an octopus, squirting in the water. An octopus, an octopus, gulp, gulp, gulp. Oh no, he's been eaten by a Tuna fish, a tuna fish, flashing through the water. A tuna fish, a tuna fish, gulp, gulp, gulp. Oh no! She's been eaten by a great white shark, a great white shark, lurking in the water. A great white shark, a great white shark, gulp, gulp. Oh no! He's been eaten by a humongous whale, humongous whale, spouting in the water. A humongous whale, a humongous whale. Uh, oh, beg your pardon. This is how I make the puppet show. I have two pieces of card. And the right sort of stiffness is something a bit like a cereal box is good. You need something that's got some rigidity so it'll stand up when held in the air vertically. And the C piece is always longer by quite a bit. So that you can, not too much actually, so you can fold those bits in at both ends and then it becomes the same width as the sky. The reason for this is that because if you have it completely flush, you end up not being able to insert, especially for a younger child, it's very hard to get, if it's too tight, it's very hard to get those things in there. And also once you get them in, they're quite likely to catch if there isn't a nice big gap. Sometimes before you start you can do this sort of movement and make sure there's plenty of room to pop up and down. Otherwise it's very frustrating when you're trying to be clever. So the next thing you have to do, and this is how I would um, present it to a child I made them in advance because you can't really do it on the spot. Well, sometimes I did, but I'd always have some ready to roll while I made some more while they were working. So, so I would present them to the children something like this. So they were folded, they were sellotaped on that side, and this side would be the sea, and that side's open. That way they can decorate the sky, then decorate the sea, Ideally two different colours, so that they would look different. So I use these, um, I forget what they're called, but you would know them. And I use the darker ones. I'd have a bowl for sea colours and a bowl for sky colours. And I would show the children, I'd take the paper off, oh, tut, 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 tut. And show them how you can do much quicker and smoother and more wave-like movements by holding the crayon on its side, which is a great thing for pencil grip because you really have to that's quite a hole there and you can just fill in the sea dark colors maybe some on the edge it's probably a bit prescriptive of me but I, I show them what I do because sometimes they want to see what you do they want to just do it so I, I do a sun first Remember all that whole business when you're a child, when you draw the sun and then you put the sky around it and it turns green? Always used to frustrate me. And then light colours for the sea, for the sky rather. And again, it's so much quicker if you use this, you know, on its side. You don't get lines because the sky doesn't tend to be full of lines. And you need to go down a fairly distant, distant way because, um, because otherwise it'll be, there'll be a gap between the sea and the sky. And then I sellotape them together, or masking tape is stronger, and because they're slightly waxy. And you'll see that this is marginally longer, and that makes even more of a nice buckle when you um, sellotape the two together. And there it is, sellotape together with the masking tape, and obviously, ideally, you don't bring it right down the bottom, because that limits your span of action for the fish. And there's a nice big gap, so that an octopus can go up there, Get in easily, hard to do, there we go. And not get caught on his, her or his way down. Excellent. There you go.
and now the puppets. This is, of course, a very controversial area. Drawing. Woo um, a large part of children, no, that's not right, a large number of children could draw a fish if you said so, and it might not look like much, it might look like like this, you know, and, and that's fine. I, I tend to encourage them to use two colours because then you can see the eye, but that's a very good fish. Um, and, and, and some of them can't. Well, they can, but they think they can't, and so they say, I can't. I definitely encourage freehand drawing and um, show them what I do and sometimes I'll break it down and say look it's a bit like an egg with a triangle need a big join though otherwise the tail falls off and an eye if they can't and if they really can't then I let them um, use templates and frankly drawing around a template without it moving is an art form as well and 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 lead pencils are very good for doing that sort of thing felt pens are too unmovable, you know, can't be wiped out, and um, colour pencils don't slide quite well enough. This is a lead pencil. These two are great. If your children have cheap coloured pencils, it's going to be hard. A, they break, and B, they don't make a strong mark. Whereas these fat ones, which you can get from Office Max or other companies, Lyra, whatever, oh, there's a Lyra one, are great. So if you're doing around a template, you know, just to point out, you've got to hold it. And it's such a wonderful, you know, it's such a great skill. Oh, look at that. Fancy words. My God, go back to the basics. And go round. So it's an art to um, go round without losing your place. And often they'll do it together. Or I might even sellotape it down briefly, just a tiny little tack. So they can see what they're doing. And then they decorate it and cut it out. I would never go to work without a pencil sharpener. And some decent pencils. I've begun to keep those in the car. So frustrating. Having drawn my fish and got my stick, I turn the fish upside down. Put the stick in the middle so it doesn't stick out the top. Make sure the fish is the right way up. I usually use sellotape. You don't get masking tape lying around. But I would always do one that way. And also one that way. Just because it holds in better, especially if it's cheap crap sellotape and also I tell the children you know if your fish doesn't if you can't use the scissors well, that's another story um, try another pair because often it's not you that can't use scissors it's the scissors that are rubbish because they've been used for cutting pipe cleaners and they just need replacing it's so frustrating and actually a stiff card like this is really nice to cut because paper can just bend under the imp impact of blunt scissors whereas a stiffish card like a Christmas card stiffness is perfect it stays nice and crisp and you can achieve a great deal of satisfaction. Lately we started developing um, a storage system because it can be very frustrating when you've got a fish and someone else has got a fish and to keep them all together I always name them um, so you can then keep all your various characters for a story in the back in your pouch and have them ready and easy to take home like so. And of course, there are other stories that you can do besides um, Slippery Fish. And that is, um, here's one here. Oh, there should be another one somewhere. Hold the camera. I thought what there was, apart from things that eat things, this food chain idea. I mean, I don't go for all of this. It's sort of destruction and, I don't know, overtones of having and getting and taking and wanting. So I tried to think of a different one and I thought, what chain goes the other way? I can't remember, there was a story that went with this, and possibly a song, but I just thought of a song that I could use. I have to miss out the blossom stage, but never mind. This is a nice little finger verse, I'll show you that as well. I found a little cherry stone, and I put it in the ground. And when next I took a look, a tiny shoot I found. That tiny shoot, it grew and grew. Till it became a tree. And I picked the tiny cherries and had them for my tea. Well, that was clearly an apple tree, but this is the um, this is how it originally goes. I found a little cherry stone and put it in the ground. And when next I came to take a look, a tiny shoot I found. 
That tiny shoot, it grew and grew till it became a tree. And I picked the tiny cherries and ate them for my tea. And another series is The Little Gingerbread Man. Inexplicably, there's a penguin in there, but that's what happens when you ask children. And so what other children, what other animals chase the little gingerbread man? Do you remember? And someone said a penguin, so we added a penguin. And that's how stories evolve, which is a wonderful thing. You just can't do that with a book and a CD, but you can do it with stick puppets and stories and drawings and oral storytelling. Thank you for watching. Please share and like. Thank you. Bye. I discovered that I could solve the problem of shimmering light, which I had when the light was shining directly onto my white cardboard screen, by attaching white cardboard to the inside top of the box and having the light bounce off that. This worked very well. I also added my two heavy, heavy yoga blocks on top of the box to stop it shaking around and keeping the camera steady, which was placed over that little hole at the top. It worked very well.